good afternoon, good people of YouTube, and everyone subscribing, and those who will not. I've not loaded for a bit because I've been doing other, some real life, she's always there, but recently with coming back I thought about making some different types of videos, uh, primarily ones to do with people in the game, rather than a specific way of playing the tank, more on the base of how not to win, or how not to lose games and how to win, or in most cases how not to win, which is an ideal way of saying how to lose, but anyway, let's get into it. I'm playing on Swamp in the T54, currently top tier, there's only two tier 9s on each team, which is ideal. Um, the main premise for this is to show you why games are lost, what people are doing wrong. Swamp itself is a pretty much uh, an okay map because a lot of people don't move from Swamp, which they shouldn't in a way. There's a lot of cover, you can clearly see where our team is in counter battles, so you can more or less guarantee that no one's going to go to the flag. At the moment, a lot of our team are, are camped on back. One of the main problems I find with this is that whilst everyone's concentrated in the middle, as you can see from the heavies on their team and the heavies on our team and mediums, going up this side I've spotted absolutely no one and it, it just shows to me that no one on our team is looking at where I am because if you do a look at the map you'll see that there's an absolute massive gap for my view range to be able to see. So whilst I want people to move forward with me, I tend to find that people don't and this is one of the reasons why you may find yourself in a position of a, a losing game because people are not taking advantage of massively wide open spaces or a perfectly good rush route. If you see a tank rushing down and you don't see anything that's in front of him and he hasn't spotted anything and he's not acting like he's been detected by anything, why not just assume that there's absolutely nothing there? And just go for it and see what happens. As it is, I'm a top tier tank so it's perfectly acceptable for me to go rushing forward to try and take on people. I have really good armour, I have a really good gun, great of fire, the penetration, the damage etc and the fact that I'm nimble and fast. These are all very very good reasons for people to try and push with me but they don't and this is one of the reasons why you tend to find that games are lost is because people are not taking into account or not looking at the map that's a really big one people don't press the back button and see that there are many many places where they could be pushing down into they could be going around they could be taking up a better position to snipe from across as it is you can see here there is only one tank on my right and that must be the case because of where they spawn it's number one and two it's nowhere near that hill it would be completely unreasonable to assume that someone on their team would go up on that side of the hill. This is obviously map specific, but it's on any map where there's key points like Malinovka where you've got the high points of the high ground, you've also got the low ground near the water's edge as well. So it's map awareness, knowing what map you're playing on, knowing what tanks you're going up against, knowing what tank you're playing in and how it is that you can go forward. It got to the point where I was like, right, well, I need to show these people that no one else is here. Yes, I'm not talking on the mic, but you can see that no one else is, so people in party chat, people in connect mics that I've had to mute because there's all the other stuff going in the background. You can see why people don't talk. Connect mics are really goddamn annoying. But again, I've spent the last two or three minutes here, and it's only now that the T4, uh, T20 sorry, I mean, has decided to come up after me. And it, it beggars belief. At the moment, we're losing 2 4. And when I look at how that's happened, I wonder how many people are in a position, either on the hill or going around the side, as you can see in F9. Really, really pointless positions. There's no reason to go that far forward. Especially on Swamp, being the map it is, there's no support behind you, so there was no reason to go forward. What I'm going around this way is because I know the tank is very, very good. There's no artillery in the game. I'm top tier. I mean, you, you can also be a tier 8 tank and you're still doing really well coming around the side. I have really good turret armor and really good penetration. I know I can push around, so if I can push around, notice that if you're a tier 8, a tier 7, and, and go push around with them. Again, scenario specific, but you can take bits from it and be able to implement it into other parts. So as we're carrying on, it's still a sort of a stalemate. We do have a heavy tank in G6, which I think is a really good spot, especially if you've got people on the other side, because you can snipe across, force them back, and have them not appear over the top of the hill. That's a, a relatively good one. But then you have the people of the um, heavy medium moving across F3, F4 in quite open space. They're able to be shot from the people near the cat flag where that heavy is, and they might actually be protected and not being able to get hit by the other tanks. So why go out in open space? Try and stick to as much cover as possible and try not to put yourself as being out in the open, an easy target to hit. It, it, these are just really simple things that you can do in game to ensure that, especially when you're on like Malinovka, Prokhorovka, or something where there's a massive open space between you and the target ahead, 
you're not putting yourself in a position where you're going to get derped by a T95. You're not going to go around and try and take on two of them. The VK Bravo, that is really, really good in tier 9, tier 10. Can you imagine how well it is at tier 9 and below? When you find out at the end of this game, that VK Bravo barely loses any health. And I'm certainly not going to go and try and take him on. My next stage now is to go up and do the heavy job, but on my own, because there's a lot of tanks on that side with hardly any health. So it's now a case of trying to thin the herds. Yes, they don't have a lot of health. Yes, they're tier 8, but there's a lot of tier 8s on each team. So, as it is now, I'm trying to remove the guns from the game. I know the T95 is looking for KB4. He's sort of doing a good job in holding him back, so the next stage is just to try and thin the numbers. But to to see that massive open gap that is there and find that no one has really pushed it or, or took a long time to go forward you may have found that at least pushing down and being aggressive and, and going early you've removed a lot of tanks from the game, you've pushed people back, you've forced them to be further away you could even argue in this case what would be the best option is to go on a cap if we're holding people back from this spawn they're not going to be able to shoot over the top again another example of what you, you, can, you can and can't do in the game so you see, the other three tanks, T29 and T34 and the Charity, I end up taking out as well as the, the Lerva a bit later on. But it is the whole problem that it causes is do I cap or do I not cap? Well, we, we should have really capped that. The, the 11 7 doesn't give the, the game justice because of the people who are still sat back. The person in D5, I believe, is the T10. Um, there might have been a few more T9s than I actually thought. But again, they're, they're using tanks to snipe from afar, so at the moment, my current challenge is, right, what do I do? Well, the T95's on not, not too much health, but it's something that I could probably try and take on. The BK Bravo, unless I get around the side of him, is going to be a bit of a mare. So we, we find ourselves in a position where, if we capped, we would have won the game. But we didn't cap, so we're likely to lose the game. And it does end up being that this is a loss. Spoilers alert, but yeah, it's a loss game. Uh, the next one I'll show you on another video will be a win. And you start wondering what's actually happening and why why this has gone through like this. So the, the T95, like I say, it looks like it's on a lot of health, but when you actually boil down to the uh, reload of the T54, you kind of look at it and go, hmm, that's actually quite decent, not too much. There's a, a fair chance I could actually take them on. It turned out to be that when we were winning by that margin, a lot of the tanks were on a lot lower health and had themselves in a bad position. Again, they were trying to find them going forward and getting kills over a flag cap. And this sparks up an absolutely massive debate on whether to go for which one. At the moment, my job was only to try and remove people from the game or at least engage people to stop them coming towards us. Uh, I got very lucky with the T95 not shooting me. Why he didn't, I don't know, but yo, low swag, that's all I always say. But this is the, the problem that it causes, in that we might have actually been better to go, yep, yeah, should have capped, should have not. Th this was a very easy decision to see, at least the part of being, right, well we need to try and force them over the top, the T95 is coming round, we've actually got tier 9 tanks with a lot of health and armour, so it is. It throws up a lot of questions, and, and one of the things that I tend to find with people is that they don't take advantage of wide open spaces that they need to go through. If you see there's a wide gap and you see that there's a tank far forward regardless of the tank and it's not spotted anything, you can safely assume in every single way that there's nothing there. If he's not acting like it's been detected, just go for it. Because it's most likely that there isn't anything there for it. As it turns out, the uh, T10 has had enough and he's going to go and brown himself. But in, a, in, in short, make sure you use an advantage of if a tank is faster than you and gets forward and doesn't spot anything, go assume that there's nothing there. Go take advantage of the wide gap. This is one of the things that, that causes games to be lost. Take note of where people are on the map, press the back button, use the full mini-map because that one at least you get to see where people are in an entirety. If you can see 8 or 9 tanks that are on that bottom screen, you can safely assume that the rest of them are going to be very very close by, especially when you've got a lower amount of people in the game because people have been killed. If you find yourself in a position go right at the start of the game, there's only 8 people there, assume that the rest of them have gone around the side. You can predict where people are going to go on the base of what tank they're actually driving. If you're going to find fast mediums, they're always going to go in the same direction. What I dislike seeing such a massive amount is in this case of people not taking advantage of wide open space when they should do and finding it in a way that, well, the game's lost because of it. Um, this was one of the prime examples, but the next video I'll put up is how it is that you go on and win a game. Uh, 
hopefully like proper win. But yeah, how it is that you actually go on and, and win the game and go forward and actually in, in some respects take the notes from the game we've just played, what it is that went wrong, and then put them right. And there is a massive difference to how well the team gels and, and works. Yes, it is running solo, but at the same time, you find yourself in a position that going right. So actually, what I did in that game was I should have gone forward and, and filled up the gap. Whereas it was that I did it in this game, it's gone on and won. It's forced other people on my own team to realise that, right, there's no one there, we can push forward. And then the next video will, will perfectly illustrate that pinpoint. Uh, but I'll put that in a separate video for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, I'll have the other one up tomorrow.